Counting all these bands, never been to Santa Rosa. Sat up in the cell with a plug from Sinaloa. European model 550 with the blow up. Represent the brown side, rest in peace, Toka. Hey yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling blessed, and like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. So with that being said, crazy story. I always wanted to talk about this guy, but everybody seems to be talking about him and everybody seems to be circulating the same video about who said cops are off limits. So let's get into this one. So with that being said, hit that subscribe button, hit that like, always leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Check the links in the description for my Apple and Spotify music. Go ahead and run my streams up and you can check out my playlist section on my YouTube channel and check out my music right there. Thank you guys for you guys' time. Most important, thank you guys for you guys' support. Now, in order to tell you this story, I have to backtrack it a little bit. Now, we all, everybody knows who Weddle Sherman is from San Diego. Everybody's seen the videos about how he, he did the interviews talking to the cop. And me personally, like, he didn't hide the fact that who he was and the way he wasn't negotiating with him. Like, man, who said cops are off limits? I didn't say cops are off limits. What? You can get it, man. We're all different, bro. That video, I ain't gonna lie, man. It was probably one of the best videos I've ever seen from a Mexican Mafia member or about a Mexican Mafia member. I don't know, something about that video, just like, man, that's a cool dude right there, man. He's pretty awesome for that. You, you can't deny it, bro. That video has got millions of views. But this situation, he couldn't save his solados, right? So now, mind you, back in the day, before these new changes that came about, you had a lot of individuals. Most of the time, the audio you were from, usually you worked with for the big homie within the region. Like, for example, if you're from San Diego, you're going to work with a San Diego Mexican Mafia member. It's not all the time, not all the case, but most of the time you're going to do it. It's like everybody out of Orange County pretty much worked for Sana. That was pretty much who your, your go-to big homie was. That's how things work. The penal system, like the homie explained, you can work for multiple carnales, but it didn't matter. You can work for this carnal for a couple years, end up on this carnal's uh, roster and payroll. It all depends who you chose to work for, or unless you know you were appointed a certain individual and you had to do what you had to do. So, remember I told you about the twin brothers from San Diego. They were bringing in dope, but they were bringing in dope for Fox and Rascal. And the ASU leadership around that time, the ASU Mesa, was getting the dope from these twins, getting in the back, saying that they were waiting for Rascal to come, but they were just shooting it up, shooting it up. So they're getting zips of Glavo, zips of that black tar, but they're feeding maybe half of the tear, feeding the half of a half in their arms. So by the time Rascal came to pick up for Fox, you know, he was going back with three grams, five grams, maybe seven grams at the most. So you had the mess on members on the yard that are actually overlooking the fact that these two individuals are obligated to bring in dope for Fox. They're bringing in the dope. They're forwarding it to the mess on. The mess on is making sure that it touches down in the ASU. So the mess on the yard is taking care of business by the book. But when it gets to ASU, you got a couple of tecatos right there. They're like, man, pasalo, pasalo, shoot it, bro. Shoot the line, shoot the line. Mm, damn. Damn. Oh. You feed my homes? Yeah. And then remember, Rascal wasn't coming back till like three or four months. So say, you know, if it's been about two months and you still ain't showed up, they ain't going to sit on that dope that long. Nobody's going to hold on to that amount of dope for that long. So they just probably just kept feeding their veins. Like the homie was saying, Nick, he was on the tier, so he was partying with all that dope that were getting sent by the twins. But the twins kept hitting on the yard, keep sending some back. So, you know, the twins' minds, the brothers, they're assuming that, you know, I probably, I sent like two or three pieces back there. So Rasco and Fox should at least have like maybe 30, 40 some grams going back to the AA, going back to Corcoran Shoe. That's what their assumption was. Until they remove the until they remove the hitter of the San Diego car, he gets blasted. Prior to that, prior to them getting blasted, when Rasco started suggesting, like, hey fool, these fools gotta get hit, bro. I'm not getting enough dope. These fools ain't sending the amount of dope that they're saying they're saying. But the ASU is like, this is all I got, bro. This is all I got. Throwing them fools under the bus. There was already talks from the ASU Mesa going to that Mesa that was on the yard. And they were telling him, like, hey, fool, you got to tell this fool. Rascal was contacting him directly. Like, hey, man, tell that fool. I said, what's up with my dope? He's coming up a lot short. You know, I'm a few extra grams short. And the Mesa from the yard is writing them back, basically saying, like, hey, bro, we've been sending that back there. But Rascal gets it in his mind that the twins are lying and that the Mesa on the yard is lying. He wants that fool blasted. But before he gets blasted, the San Diego car was pretty thick. 
And they were going around pretty much trying to secure the two homies. Like, hey, bro, you're not going to just hit this fool. Because they already know how the politics work with the Surinas. So they know this dude has something coming. And they're telling the rest. They're telling the mess out of San Diego cars approaching the mess. Like, bro, you ain't going to hit him, bro. He's been doing his job, bro. He's been fulfilling his obligations to Fox. We know he's sending that dope back there. You guys even know he's sending that dope back there. But what's the mess I'm going to do when Rascal says, hey, blast this fool. Knowing Rascal was working for Fox. Knowing Fox. So they're under the assumption that Fox wants this done. So what happens? The hitter gets hit and his twin brother jumps in. They go to the back, get under investigation. They keep getting blasted and blasted until Rascal reaches the investigation and comes to the conclusion that, hey, bro, you want to be on good terms? Blast your brother. I feel like he lied to me. And that fool said F you to Rascal and Fox. And it, it was like that. That's how it was left. So now this takes place. The San Diego car could not protect these twin brothers from San Diego. So you have a Sureño named Kiko from uh, Market Street, San Diego. He's pushing the hard line on the mess out there for letting that happen. For knowing that that twin was sending that dope back of the twin brothers, they knew that that dope was going to the back. And yet they still fulfilled the order of Fox and Rascal to blast one of their homies when they were the ones responsible for sending the dope to the back. But they had no choice. They got put in a predicament like we know what's really going on. But Fox and Rascal said blast him. So we're just going to send him to the back and let the ASU Mesa and Rascal and Fox deal with them. They're out of our hands. That was the best they can do, which is a scandalous politic. And you kind of understand why I say it's scandalous. Like they knew they were the ones getting in possession of the dope and sending it to the back. But hey, bro, he ain't sending everything to the back. Blast him. And they still got him blasted. So we're talking about the, the, the Southerners that got involved, had to sacrifice with weapons, catch time for something that they was an illegitimate reason, was an unrighteous reason to blast them. So now the San Diego car starts politicking against the Mesa. The first thing they do is they gather, they gather up all their homies from San Diego and they're getting ready for war. They're getting ready to overthrow the Mesa on the yard, which happens to be the Orange County car at the time. But this was Fox and Rascal's prison. So the San Diego car are working for Weddle Sherm. But Weddle Sherm's in the feds. So they're sending letras and doing whatever they can, reaching uh, his secretaries and his phone calls on the streets, reaching the wet Sherm like, hey, bro, we need you to approve that this removal was unjustifiable. Not only clear the twin brothers, but we want to we want to blast the mess on, off this yard and take it over. And doing so, if they take over the mess out, that's more money for wet Sherm on, on his books. Wet Sherm doesn't get involved. For one, he's a fed brother now. Even though he was embraced in the States, he's still a Fed brother now, so he's more involved in the Fed politics. They get at the Ayala brothers who were on death row at the time. They can't do nothing about it because they said, hey, man, that's not our jurisdiction. Those are not our yards. You may be my soldados, but that yard belongs to Fox, Rascal, such and such. We're not going to overstep our boundaries. We're not going to get involved. We can't do nothing for you. So while this San Diego car has been making its, you know, small amounts of money running their dope, when the twins would get money, they'd break the San Diego off. Or the, the dope, they'd break the San Diego car off. They would sell that dope, get high too, but send the money to Weddle Sherm. Weddle Sherm's been getting paid this whole time that the twin brothers have been hitting that dope. Fat dope. They said they were hitting hella dope. And the first time that the San Diego car needs help from Weddle Sherm, Weddle Sherm says, hey, I can't do nothing for you. That's out of my jurisdiction. You're on your own. So what happens? Fox and them hear about that the San Diego car is politicking through Weddle Sherm to overthrow his Mesa. So the Orange County car at the time that was, that was responsible for the Mesa gets the green light. Smack everybody from uh, San Diego and get them off the yard for trying, to, for trying to overthrow the government. And they do. And the homie said he sat back because my subscriber, he's from L.A. So he was like, man, I sat back and watched that thing unfold. And you just seen homie after homie after homie from San Diego just getting dropped on the yard. Remember, I explained it a long time ago with Thudy how he removed the whole OC car that was all Anaheim from Sad FC Yard, the main line. So I know it's a possibility. I know it could be done because the swingers are so deep. So they just started smacking all the San Diego homies off the yard. Man, 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 get off the yard, homie. Get off the yard, homie. Stop writing letters, homie. Get off the yard. Bam. And they hit Kiko pretty bad. The homie told me they got Kiko from Market Street pretty bad. So now... Every, all the San Diego cars in the back so they can answer for all this. But on the yard, when the OC is pretty much conducting business, the homie even said, man, they put out a filter like anybody coming from San Diego from now on until further notice, even if they're fresh off the bus, we're blasting them. We're taking them down. He said there was no hit to, you know, take them out policy, but they just had to get 
poked up, learned her lesson, get sent to the back, get re-educated on who Jardis really is, and just remember their place. That nobody's gonna overthrow the Mesa, which it can possibility can really happen if another Cardinal is like, I want that yard, bro. Tell my Solalos, man, take everybody out and replace them with this amount of Solalos that got left behind so I can gain this. It happens. Carnales do politic on other Carnales for these yards. That's how the Mexican Mafia works. We've already seen it all over YouTube. Eventually, this situation dies down with the San Diego car. They fall back in line. But see, the part about the story that I want to elaborate on is you got to remember, this whole San Diego car, not the twins, I think the twins, you know, their obligation was to another big homie instead of their big homie from San Diego, which is not their fault. They choose who they want to work with. That was their obligation. So be it. They were still blessing the San Diego car to bless Wedo Sherm because that's their padrino, that's their elder, that's their tío. But you had a lot of San Diego homies, sureños, pushing a hard line for San Diego and on behalf of Wedo Sherm, making him his money. So wherever he is in ADX, wherever he was at the time in the feds, I don't know if this was around a time when he was in a different federal prison when he took care of uh, the Mexican Mafia dude Negro for messing around with the you know what. But still, they did all that dirt for him, praised him, looked up to him like that was their leader. That's their big homie. And you got to understand as a Sureño, from what I've understood, is that when they have a big homie from their barrio, they look at it like, man, this is us, man. He represents us, all of us. We are him. He is us. They're going to praise that individual. So what I'm sure be from San Diego and this San Diego car is working for him. It's like, bro, they have the privilege to be able to use Wedo Sherm's name to throw it around for whatever reason. They got that authority. They got that right. They got that palabra to do what they need to do, do what they want to do because they're connected to a big homie from San Diego. But the one moment that they turn to him like, hey, bro, we need you to save these two young homies, bro. They're getting politicked and done dirty. Wedo Sherm gets back like, hey, bro. It's out of my jurisdiction. I don't know what to tell you. You're on your own. And all these fools got hit on the yard. And you know, even if they remain in good standings as a sureño, the way the homie told me, hey, bro, if they get blasted on the yard and those are considered calentadas, checadas, bro, they're like at the bottom of the totem pole. Who do you think is going to be the next on the next mission? All them dudes, they're going to utilize every single one of them individuals every time somebody got to get hit. So not only did they go to war and get put in bad standings temporarily, they, they acknowledge the fact that their big homie couldn't save them, so what's the point of working for them? Only to end up on the list where, like, man, the next person that comes, I got to catch a case. Dirty politics, huh? So, with that being said, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. When they got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. Peace.